to, uh, to set the scene, the first half of my presentation, I want us all to not forget the benefits that uh, precision agricultural tools give to farmers in terms of better management, um, managing uh, variable rate, variable crop growth. But if we take away this aspect of it and think about what we're still left with, and even if we take away these benefits, we're still left with tyres running over our fields and tools running through our fields. So when it comes to the solutions for this problem, two solutions that I'm going to present today as they fit into the work that I'm currently doing. The first one is low ground pressure. So we have uh, several options here. We can use um, sorry, low ground pressure specific tyres such as the Michelin Active Bib, which are the tyres that I've been working with, and um, a rubber track vehicle. So they, these uh, quite simple to, uh, for farmers to adopt. They can change their tyres um, or choose a vehicle on different running gear and it improves their operational flexibility um, and of course the ultimate goal that we're trying to achieve here is to, to reduce the compaction. But as we saw with the images that Milan presented and that I showed earlier, if you still run around on the soil, you're still applying some pressure to that soil because these machines aren't whole grass. And if we really want to have a look at what damage these tyres and tracks are doing to the soil, this is some work that I did in the first year of uh, my PhD here. And we can see that these lines here show that high inflation pressure tyres result in high soil pressures. These were pressures me measured at a depth of 300 millimetres below the soil surface. If we reduce the inflation pressure, we reduce the soil pressure. And if we use a track vehicle, we have the lowest soil pressure. So the second option that we have is controlled traffic farming. And uh, this diagram really illustrates how this system works in terms of removing the wheelings from the cropped area and the tires or tracks travel on uh, permanent pathways um, for each of the operations. So the benefits of uh, this system the previous diagram looked pretty simple on paper, but I have an asterisk here, and that's the point I'll address on the next slide. Um, so on paper it is a simple concept, and the idea is very nice, because there are um, clear on-farm benefits in terms of improving soil structure, improving the infiltration, because where we saw that first pass does the most damage to the infiltration, if that first pass is in one place, that damage is limited to that one place. We can improve crop yields, we can reduce fuel time and machinery uh, cost savings. And this is where I want to bring back in the precision agriculture from the first slide with GPS guidance and steering. We have all those additional benefits with the system as well. But my asterisk, controlled traffic farming does have its limitations in terms of standardizing wheel centers and matching implement widths. Um, also, if we traffic in the same place permanently, we're obviously concentrating that compaction to one place. This needs to be managed. Really, the limitations with the uh, implement widths at the moment remain with industry and manufacturing, but that's something that we're hoping to work with and overcome. And some farmers do see GPS investment as a drawback. So I've presented these two solutions, and as I said, the on-farm benefits are being realized, but really there's a strong need for a robust scientific investigation and that's where I come in and the team that I'm working with here at Harper Adams. And that's now what I want to present to you and show you how we're addressing this. So the objective of the study um, is to assess these alternative traffic and tillage systems that I've introduced and really see how they are affecting the soil structure and how that in turn is affecting the crop growth in the end and ultimately how it's affecting the system's performance and economics. So we are looking at a 3x3 three three factorial design for our experiment. So we have three levels of trafficking shown here on the top. We have random traffic, low ground pressure and controlled traffic. And three levels of tillage, deep, shallow and direct drill. This is what the field trial looks like. We have four blocks. So in each of these blocks we have the nine treatments. 
Um, the, each of the plots, each of the treatments are four metres wide, so that comes from the original four metre controlled traffic farming system in the first year. And they measure 84 metres long, and it's uh, in a very good location because we can keep an eye on it from the National Centre, which is this area down right here. And to establish these tip systems, we used a garden step top down to two different depths to get the deep tillage and the shallow tillage. And then we used a four metre rough lead on all of the plots to establish second winter wheat. But what we really want to know is what all of these different treatments are doing to our soils and what crop response will be um, at the end of the day. So in terms of the effect of the tillage, we can see these pictures here show the different levels of incorporation. Um, there's not a great amount of difference between the deep and the shallow tillage, but obviously the difference is the depth that they're working at. But you can clearly see that the direct drill <coughs> has a, a, a large coverage of residue from the previous year's crop. So, to work out what uh, all these different treatments are doing over the next two years for my study, but this study will be set to continue uh, for ten years or more on this site, we have three different areas that we're looking at, as I said earlier, in our objectives. We're looking at crop soil and energy responses. So for the crop, uh, we were actually out last week measuring uh, biomass and crop growth using NDVI, using the crop surface sensor. Uh, we look at, at uh, crop establishment as well at the beginning of the year. And then obviously at the end of the year, we look at the yield using hand harvested and combine harvested. Um, using a yield monitor from RDX. Um, in, over the next month or so, we'll be opening up a profile pit on um, one end of uh, the site to have a good look at the rooting characteristics and the differences of compaction across each of the plants, depending on tracking intensity. Um, and really, this site is not just a site that gives me the fantastic opportunity to uh, complete my PhD on, but for other PhD students as well. We've got another student who's looking at lodging uh, to do the different treatments as well on the site. So, working with soil, we've already conducted some pentrometer resistance readings, and these will be repeated again. Um, and coupled with bulk density measurements and uh, soil water uh, investigation through neutron probe shown here, across the growth cycle and uh, infiltration rate as well, we're really going to get a good idea of how all of these treatments are affecting our soils. 